Welcome back to Two Minutes of History. From the thundering echoes of gunfire to the untamed showdowns between lawmen and outlaws, stay tuned as we count down the final five gunfights that complete our epic top 10 list, Real Gunfights of the West. So, don your Stetson, strap on your six-shooter, and let's ride into the heart of the Old West once more. Step into the streets of Northfield, Minnesota, on September 7, 1876, as we delve into the captivating tale of the Northfield Bank Raid. In an unprecedented show of bravery and determination, ordinary citizens rallied together to defend their community. With the alarm raised, a fierce street shootout ensued, pitting the audacious James Younger gang against the resolute townsfolk. What transpired was an astonishing turn of events, the citizens of Northfield, unbeknownst to them, confronted the most notorious outlaws of the Wild West and emerged victorious. This historic gunfight had far-reaching consequences. While Jesse James and Frank narrowly managed to escape, the loss of the younger gang members shaped Jesse James' path. Let us continue our enthralling countdown of the top 10 gunfights in the Wild West. Number 4. El Paso Gunfight On April 14, 1881, El Paso, Texas, bore witness to a legendary clash known as the Four Dead in Five Seconds Gunfight. This notorious bloodshed was ignited by the murders of two young vaqueros who had been tracking stolen Mexican cattle. The discovery of the victims at the ranch of Johnny Hale, a known cattle thief, prompted a search led by an enraged Mexican posse demanding justice. Constable Gus Krempkow acted as the Spanish interpreter during the subsequent inquest. Tensions escalated at a saloon when Krempkow engaged in a heated exchange with George Campbell, Hale's friend and former city marshal, who accused the lawman of sympathizing with Mexicans. Tensions escalated at a saloon when Krempkow engaged in a heated exchange with George Campbell, Hale's friend and former city marshal, who accused the lawman of sympathizing with Mexicans. In a tragic turn of events, a drunken and unarmed Hale unexpectedly seized one of Campbell's pistols and shot Krempkow at close range, ending his life. Enter Dallas Staudenmayer, El Paso's newly appointed marshal. Drawn by the commotion, Staudenmayer swiftly intervened, raising his Colt Point 45 s his first shot missed Hale but claimed the life of a Mexican bystander. Without hesitation, his second shot struck Hale squarely in the head, ending his rampage. Staudenmayer then turned his attention to Campbell, firing three fatal shots into his stomach. In a matter of seconds, four lives were lost. Number 3. Luke Short vs. Longhair Jim Courtright. Luke Short, gunfighter, gambler and bar owner, faced off against Timothy Isaiah Longhair Jim Courtright, a former Fort Worth marshal running a questionable detective agency. When Courtright approached Short for protection money, Short boldly refused. The tension between them quickly escalated, captivating the town's attention. On that fateful night, a drunken Courtright called out Short, and the two adversaries stood face to face outside the White Elephant Saloon. In a well-documented yet astounding turn of events, Short's first shot severed Courtright's thumb, rendering him unable to cock his pistol. Short swiftly fired two fatal shots into Courtright's chest, ending the duel within seconds. Contrary to the popular portrayal in books, movies, and folklore, the number of classic duels or high noon gunfights in the Old West was relatively few, and this duel is among the few notable instances that have captured attention. Number 2, Gunfight at the O.K. Corral. A notorious clash in Tombstone, Arizona Territory, where the crooked and violent nature of the law favored town marshal, Virgil Earp, and his brothers, as well as their companion Doc Holliday, in a brief and merciless mid-afternoon shootout behind the O.K. Corral that had little to do with upholding justice. Within a span of about 30 seconds, three cowboy outlaws lay dead, while Morgan Earp, Virgil Earp, and Doc Holliday sustained injuries of varying degrees. Wyatt Earp emerged unscathed and, along with his brothers and Holiday, was exonerated of any wrongdoing thanks to a court ally who dismissed impartial testimonies during the post-shootout hearing. In any unbiased court, notes author William Weir, the Epps and Holiday would have been found guilty of premeditated murder. But there was no unbiased court in Tombstone. The gunfight's name, popularized by the heavily fictionalized 1957 movie, Gunfight at the O.K. Corral, has transcended history to become an integral part of American folklore.
Wyatt Earp, outliving his contemporaries and captivating a 20th century audience, further solidified his status as the premier gunfighter of the Wild West through subsequent retellings. Despite the ambiguous nature of frontier law enforcement, Earp remains a legendary figure. As noted by Earp biographer Alan Barra, he is likely as close to a hero as we can rightly claim given the complexities and compromises of that era. We have arrived at the pinnacle of our top 10 countdown of real gunfights of the West. It's time to unveil the number one spot, an iconic clash that has reverberated through history. The legendary duel between Wild Bill Hickok and Davis Tut Jr. In a smoky tavern at the Leon House in Springfield, Missouri, a fateful night of heated card games and alcohol-fueled arguments ignited the most famous and one of the very few prearranged quick-draw duels in the annals of the Wild West. Amidst conflicting tales of a dispute over a watch of great sentimental value to Hickok, or a prostitute, the duel was inevitable. As the sun set on that July evening in 1865, the town square became the stage for a life-altering encounter. Standing approximately 75 yards apart, James Butler Wild Bill Hickok, the Prince of Pistoliers, faced off against Dave Tart. With cap and ball revolvers in hand, the tension reached its climax. Hickok uttered the words, Dave, don't come any closer, and in an instant, Tut's shot missed its mark. Hickok, calm and precise, steadied his gun with his left hand, took aim, and fired, hitting Tut square in the chest. Boys, I'm killed, Tut called out, before he collapsed and died. This rare exhibition of quick-draw prowess became the inspiration for countless Hollywood scenes emphasizing speed alone. However, Hickok's triumph in this singular gunfight demonstrated that accuracy reigns supreme, even in the face of extreme rarity. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through gunfights in the Wild West. If you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel, 2 Minutes of History, so you never miss out on our fascinating videos that delve into the captivating tales of the past. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.